In this video, I'll show you how you can do an isometric view of the flange bearing drawing. Now, we've already got the front and top view drawn, dimensioned with a section view. The first thing I want to do is set my layer to be on the isometric layer. And when I draw the isometric drawing, I usually just draw it off to the side over here. We can always scale it and move it into place after we're done. So I'll just kind of find a blank area over here and I'm going to get started drawing. Now remember when we're doing isometric we need to set our um, isometric snap on. So we'll do that by clicking on this button down here. Remember we have several different isometric options here and we toggle F5 to get between those different options. <clears throat> you can do that within a command. Another thing that we need to make sure of is that we have our ortho turned on. You always use ortho when you're drawing isometric. So if yours is not turned on, it's this icon right here, or you can also hit F8 on the keyboard. So to get started, I'm going to draw a line kind of like I did in the front view. I'm just going to draw a line with a length of 8. Looks good. And now I'm going to draw a series of isocircles to get them right where we need them. So remember, it's the axis end ellipse option. Right when I start that, before I click anywhere, I'm going to type I, enter for isocircle. And we'll snap to the midpoint of this line. And my F5 is going to toggle between all the different options of isocircles that we have. So we want the iso top isocircle, so it should look like this. And now it's prompting me for the radius. So we are given a diameter of four, so we'll just type in two for the radius. Looks good. We'll do another ISO circle. I enter for ISO circle. And over here, we'll do this one with a radius of one. I'm gonna go ahead and copy. You can copy this one or you could draw a new ISO circle over here. I don't know that any one way is quicker than another way at that point. But so we've got our three basic circle shapes here. Now what we need to do is draw our line. Remember we went from tangent to tangent. We kind of had to force it to do that when we were in the front view by doing the shift right click option to pull up our temporary O snaps. Unfortunately, when we are in isometric, it is just not easy to draw these. So I'm going to show you what I do and you can see there's not a big science to this. I'm going to turn off my ortho only for these lines. I'll turn it back on. We really need ortho on while we're doing isometric, but these aren't really isometric lines I'm about to draw here. I'll come to my O snaps and I'm going to turn on my nearest O snap. And so I'll start with a line command and we can always grab it by the end point once we draw it and move it into place. But I'm just kind of visually kind of start my line here. And remember what, when we would snap to tangent, the tangency is that one perfect point where this line only touches the circle. It does not anywhere else. It's going to cross that circle twice or not touch it at all. So the easiest thing to do since our tangent won't work, if I do shift right click and try to force it into tangent, Oh, it did work for me. Hmm. Let's see if that actually worked. Um, we'll come back over here. And you know how I had grabbed it from this random point as a starting point. I said we could always grab the grips and bring it back uh, once we get that line drawn. So if that showed me the tangent, let's see if this will work. I'm going to click on that grip. I'm going to do shift right click, go to tangent. And it is just not wanting to give me the tangent point. So what I'm going to do is just come in here and try to find that perfect point where I'm going to turn off. Well, it's wanting to take me here. There we go. I'm going to try to find that perfect point where the line doesn't cross twice. What we don't want to have is for that line to cross twice. We don't want to bump in there, so it needs to be a nice, smooth, seamless transition. And this looks good, so we'll kind of go with this. Start the line command, and then we'll do the same thing over here. Just generally start right around where you think it should be, somewhere around here. 
shift right click let's see if it gives me my tangent again shift right click tangent Ooh, this is exciting so it took me to the tangency here up here it's not in the perfect spot you can see it's crossing over twice so what we'll do is just kind of <clears throat> snap to nearest and get it at just that one perfect spot that looks good so we'll come over here do the same thing for the other side starting right around here shift right click let's go to tangent Ooh, it won't even give me tangent now we'll go to nearest and we're just gonna kind of eyeball it just make sure it looks good see how this doesn't look good there would be a bump if I left that line there so we need to grab this and just bring it as far up as we can without it actually crossing over that line twice one more Click wherever you think you need to start. Let's see if we can grab tangent. Ooh. All right. But again, we have a bump here, so we're going to grab it. Just slide it up as far as we can. Okay. That looks good. That's a good base. So I'm going to go ahead and delete out this line. That was just a guide to get us where we're going. Now I'm going to take this overall shape and I'm going to copy it up and down. Before I do that, I need to make sure that I've turned on my ortho again. And I'll start the copy command and I will just select all of these objects, press enter. It doesn't really matter where you select as your base point. It could honestly be anywhere. And I need to bring it down, but my, my cursor is set to the crosshair that looks like an X, so I can't do that right now. I have to hit F5 to get the down option. And that's got a depth of one. Now I can just draw a line. We're gonna go from quadrant to quadrant. Line over here, quadrant to quadrant. I need to trim out. There's a lot of information I'm going to trim in here. So let's go ahead and trim. I honestly don't need these on the top. I don't need this. Got little pieces over here to trim. There is just a little bit of that roundness right here. little guy right here and um, where this these these two lines end this is actually smooth right here so we're actually going to trim that um, actually before we do that I'm going to type U enter and leave that one there I'm going to trim it after I copy this circle up so let's do the copy command we'll grab that circle and we're going to bring it up if the overall height is two or I'm sorry, the overall height is three. We're gonna copy this up two because we already have that depth of one that we've just done. So this will come up a distance of two. And then we'll just draw lines again from quadrant to quadrant. One over here. There we go. Trim. Get rid of all of that and this is what I was going to trim earlier there we go so it actually is kind of a smooth transition right there these went to the tangent points and that looks good all right so we've got the overall base drawn and so what we're going to do now is add in our counter sinks and our counter bores so to do that we've got multiple circles we need to iso circles we need to draw so I start that ellipse command I enter for ISO circle. Click here and again F5 to toggle to the one that we want. It wants the radius and we know that we have one that has a diameter of 1, one has a diameter of 0.75. So I can always type D enter that switches it to ask me for a diameter instead of a radius and now I can type in my diameter is 0.75. 
I've got another one that I need to draw. Same center point. These are all concentric. Oops, did you catch that? I forgot to type I for isocircle. I enter. Now I can specify D enter for diameter and we've got a diameter of one. So this looks great. It's a good start. Now what we're going to do is copy both of these circles. Remember it has a depth of 0.125. So I'm going to take both of these, copy them, press enter. Doesn't really matter where your base point is because we're just going to take it down. I need to hit F5 so that I can go in the down direction. And now I'm going to type in 1.125. Oh, so there's a lot going on. This top circle right here does not exist because that's the circle. That's the hole that's being drilled all the way through there. So once we came in with a bigger hole, we don't see it at that surface, at the first surface. It only exists at this surface at the bottom of that countersink. So once we delete that, this is a little easier to see. We'll just trim this and that. Looks great. That's my counter bore. I'm going to go ahead and copy. I don't want to have to draw that completely over again, so I'll copy it, pick it up at the center, and I will snap it to the center here. And that looks great. I've got both of those done. I've only got one more thing. I'm going to control S to save. I've only got one more thing to draw in this view, and that is that counter sink. So remember, we have two different diameters. It's a 1.50 and a 2.50. So let's get those drawn real quick. I enter for ISO circle, F5 to get that, the one we need. D enter for diameter, and we have 1.5. We have another one. I enter for isocircle. You got to remember that step. It's easy to forget it. 2.5. Ooh, did you see what I did? It was asking me for a radius, and I didn't stop and tell it I was about to enter a diameter. So do this again. I for isocircle. Here we go. D enter for diameter. I'm going to go ahead and say I did that on purpose just so you could see what would happen. I'm totally joking. I did not do that on purpose. 2.5. There we go. So this looks great. The thing is, this center circle obviously isn't in that top surface because it is a countersink. So what we have to do, and this is important, you have to come over here and measure this. So you cannot do an isocircle, uh, I'm sorry, an isometric counter sink without first having drawn this view from over here. So what we can do is get a dimension. So I don't actually need a dimension on my page. I can type DI for distance. We don't know this depth right here. Ooh, there we go. We don't know that depth right there. So depending on how you did it, here's what mine says, 0.5752. So I'll come back over here and I'm gonna do the move command. Press enter, F5 to bring it down, and what was it, 0 0.5752? And then I'll just trim out the excess. And there I have a counter sink. So I've drawn this, this uh, counter, or I'm sorry, the flange bearing as an isometric. And again, I just wanted to stress, the reason we came over here and had to take this dimension is remember the only information we were given about it is the, the minor diameter, the major diameter, and then we've also got um, 82 degrees. And this depth, it, that depth came out to be whatever it was. We didn't actually, we just drew that line at an angle. And then wherever it intersected with that smaller diameter, that's where we drew this line straight across. So we never knew the depth, that's a byproduct. So this looks good, we've got it over here. What I would recommend doing, I kind of hogged up the space with my front view, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna use my move command and I will select my objects. Make sure you get all your dimensions and everything. Keep them in line with each other. So I'm gonna turn off my isometric snap. Do this again. I'm gonna, as long as we keep this stuff inside that magenta rectangle, it'll print on the page just fine. <clears throat> and so now I can use my scale command 
and I'm going to scale this isometric. Select the isometric, press enter. Select anywhere for a base point, and you can visually scale it this way, but it is much better to actually type in a scale. So let's do like 0.5. We'll type in an actual scale there. That way, if we ever need to undo it, we can undo and get it back to the original size. And when we get ready to put our notes in, we can say what the scale is. So we're gonna do the move command. Select that whole thing and just press enter, select a base point. I'm gonna turn off my ortho, I'm gonna hit F8. And there we go, I can just kind of put it right in there. Now you do have an option to make this into a sectioned view. Uh, it's a little more tricky, but I'll make another video showing how you can do that. But you can, you can certainly just leave it this way. Um, but I'll show you also how you can section that isometric as well. So once we're done with this, now it's ready to, you're done with the project. You just need to set it up. Don't forget to type in your notes. When you type in the notes, in addition to the material, which the material on this is cast iron, in addition to typing in the material, you also want to type in isometric scale one to two, because we made it half size. So we'll go ahead and type in those notes and that's it. Fill out your title block in the layout and turn off the magenta rectangle, fill in your title block, and that's it, you're ready to go. You can publish this drawing.